All right. We will start the meeting. Of May 25th. All right. Minutes of the last meeting. Sorry, Sorry they were late, but yeah. they are out. Has anyone had a chance to see them? Not really. I haven't either. Why don't we... Uh, Sorry, Sally. That's okay. It was my fault. Let's forego approval of the minutes and we'll do it again next. Okay. Next week. For the next two weeks. Who Speak. is calling user one? Patrick, is that you? Nope. I am okay. uh, Patrick's iPhone. I believe. Yeah. Now I'm up here. Calling okay. user one. Call in user one, can you identify yourself, please? If you don't identify yourself, you don't get to speak. Guess you don't want to speak. <laughs> um, All right. And also Jeff's phone, who is Jeff? Jeff's iPhone. It's uh, Jeff Lynch. I'm an attorney in Lenox here on okay, the Yathrib matter. On who? Uh, Yathrib. Okay. Nice fun road. Okay. All right, let's start. What are we going to talk about 20 Mackinac Shores? I stopped there today. There's three trees planted. Hi. We're still haggling over whether the property has been expanded, I guess. Um, I sent an email to Mark. Um, Mark Stinson, but I have not really heard anything back from him. Um, Sally Lebowal, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, um, sent, as you may all have seen, a uh, 1934 map of the shoreline of the lake, which does not show a little peninsula, for whatever that's worth. Um, I, I honest and God do not know how we're going to resolve this. It's, you know, we have pictures that I would say indicate that the project has gone beyond the boundaries that it should have gone beyond. This is Bill Luttrell. Can I just say there are five new plant trees planted? Ron, did you see that when he went by? I saw three birch trees and one oak tree. There may have been another one. Maybe it's, that, that may be right, Ron. The oak tree was a little farther up the bank. The birch, well, let's say they got, they will have damp feet if they grow any roots. And they are, not likely to survive in that case. I don't know. They better get some roots fast or a good wind is gonna have issues with them. I don't, I don't even know how you could stake them down there with the rocks. Did you have a chance to um, to look at the, the distance between the pin and the Jackson? Are you you're here? Jackson, do we have measurements on the distance from the pin to the shore? And were you able to find um, the other marker? Uh, I have not uh, been to the site yet. Okay. Uh, Jackson, if you can uh, make it to the site, would you let me know and I'll meet you there? Um, sure, yeah. Get a can it's we do it as an official site visit? Because I would really like to see it. Well, yeah, I, well, 
that'd be good to do. But this is we're going to kind of base this on when Jackson can break free and get there. So um, I don't know what kind of timetable we would have. We would have to do Friday if we're going to have a, a quorum or at least Friday because I would have to advertise it. Well, it was, uh, it was my understanding you were reaching out to Mark Stinson and then they were, you were planning. Yeah, we, to... we did um, reach out to Mark Stinson, but we have not really gotten any okay. thing um, definitive from him. Yeah, I know uh, Steve Mack was waiting to hear back to meet you all on site as well. So if, if you just, uh, if you'd like him to be there, um, you can just let us know a time. <clears throat> yeah, because I'm sure we would all like to get this settled once and for all. Yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, I, I, Steve would be happy to meet you there as well. Um, so yeah, just let us know a time. <clears throat> we... I had another question. Was there a site plan on paper with the distances marked that was approved that you can compare to what's actually there? Yes. So you can bring that. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, we can we can bring the existing conditions plan from when that was surveyed, I believe, uh, in 2018, if I'm remembering correctly, um, and then our proposed site plan that was approved. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. The question, right, was, Lisa, is still whether the plan in, in um, you know, that's on the ground that's being done is, is uh, in accordance with the plan that we approved. Right, right, I understand that. Okay, um, we'll coordinate that. We'll notify all members. We'll try for Friday, Sally, if you want to post that. I will, make... I will see if I can get Mark here. He was supposed to be here tonight, I do believe. Well, unless he's calling user one, I don't see him. <laughs> Ron, what time on Friday? 10 o'clock. I mean, Mark would be coming from Springfield, so that would be a reasonable time, I would think. 10 o'clock. Thank you. Um, can you tell me what property you were just talking about? 20, 20 Mackinac Shores. That's what I figured. I just came back from there. <laughs> Three birch trees and one oak. And a new stone wall. Uh, you got some really good stone workers there, but unfortunately, I'm I'm not too sure they're not going to need to take it apart. That? It's a new Stockbridge Bowl Peninsula. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a Francis McDormand movie? Three parts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 10 a.m. Friday. Oh, I'm going to put down Friday. Thank you. To Beachwood Drive. <coughs> what are we going to talk about there? I think that was the last one. To Beachwood Drive, we went to see. Yes, we did. And um, I do not see the property owner here on this list. Um, we uh, it was our opinion from the site visit that there was one side of the property that, um, or actually two sides of the property that were, that it was surrounded with wetlands and they, that they could, if they wanted to put an addition on, it was going to have to either be on the east side of the house or the south side of the house. And I don't think that that's what they were hoping to do. There's no but one here. No I don't. One, I no don't see. I do not see the homeowner on this list at the moment. Did they actually file anything formally? No, it was a jurisdictional, or it was a pre-jurisdictional, actually. Well, they're gonna have to get it together. All right. 
We've been there once. <clears throat> there was someone at the house. He should have let him know we were there. He was a son, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe you're correct. Yep. All but, right. I, but like I say, I don't see the I don't see the homeowner here on the list of people who are on this meeting. So right. I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Public hearing. Well, we should have Nomkeg. Did everybody get their proposal? No, I did not get that one. They send us a proposal of the work that they that they would like to do or are planning to do based on our site visit. Um, shall I read it? Yes, please. Okay, scope of work for Nomkeg, 5 Prospect Hill Road, to create a plowable surface at the parking area adjoining the lower drive at Nomkeg. <coughs> measuring 450 feet by 18 feet. The work will include lowering grade to create base for the parking area, hauling in processed gravel, installing gra driveway fabric, spreading and leveling gra gravel to form a 12 inch base and adding drainage to prevent ex excess runoff from draining into the field. The objective is Nomkeg owns the driveway contiguous to the Stockbridge Cemetery as you exit the property. On the east side of the drive, we keep the most level area mode for overflow parking that we can use during larger events such as our summer concerts or anything that exceeds our current limit of 35 cars in the main parking lot. From there, we use a shuttle to bring people up to the greenhouse by exiting through Church Street and coming up the barn drive. A new Ford Transport port was purchased in fiscal year 21 for this purpose. One of the biggest lessons learned from our experience with COVID during fiscal year 21 was just how much more efficient and safe our programming ran with all parking remaining on site. By eliminating the additional staffing, shuttle buses, and the required police presence required. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, Patrick, is that you? Because you're so yeah. smart at this. Um, uh, we were able to reduce the number of people we had on our property each night and create a safer experience. We also saw, uh, saw feedback from repeat visitors who overwhelmingly preferred the experience without offsite parking and with limited ticketing as opposed to the previous scenarios. We'd like to make this parking area more suitable to our needs for year round use, given the weather conditions that occur can occur during our fall, winter, and sometimes spring programs. This would mean creating a surface we could plow during snow events, as I think it's as the existing grass parking area along the cemetery drive, or maybe it is at, um, described in the scope of work above. Um, when we were there, we did not actually see this state though. Well, we did see stakes off in the distance. Okay, so do we want to have a return site visit? I would. Okay. Yeah. Friday. So we, there's a stream. When? Friday. Friday, okay. I don't know if it's an intermittent stream, but there is a stream running down that road, and there's also a stream across the field, and it may be intermittent also. Um, and there's a lot of skunk cabbage. Yes. So, um, you know, I don't there are know. definitely resource areas there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it's really, it, the problem is that it's drainage off of the hill right. is what's yeah. coming through. Um, it comes off of the Marion Fathers uh, property and goes through Nomkeg and down to Church Street. And it's been a problem forever water because, you know, hill. water runs downhill. Exactly. Hmm. And I mean, we can talk about it at the site visit, but my concern on these things is always 10 parking spots this year, and then they need 10 more, and then they need 10 more, and it just keeps growing. So I want to be cautious. Good speaking. So, um, what time on Friday? Um, 10.45? Yeah. It was just time to get there. Okay. I'll let them well, know. Just in case, uh, just in case um, Mark is running late from Springfield, you might want to go a little bit later. 
You want to make it 11? No, the first one. Well, I'm just saying the first one starts at 10, but if you're asking him to drive out. 10.30, first one. 10.30 at 20 Mackinac Shores. Gives them half okay, an hour. So do we want to do 11 or 11 after 11 on from NOMCAG? Well, I think it should be after 11 because I think the 20 Mackinac Shores. 11.15? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Weed harvesting. Jackson, do you know anything about where that's so weed harvesting's on the weed harvesting is on it's not on the agenda, is it? It's on for informal. Yes. Because oh. we did not receive the paperwork. Yeah, I know. So oh. we I just didn't want it to let it go. Um, and Sally, I forwarded you that email and I apologize. I didn't really give you any heads up, but um, okay. I felt like I wanted that hot potato off my plate. <laughs> okay. Do you want to describe the hot potato? Well, well, just that Michael Nathan had brought up at the stewardship meeting, like he was asking why hasn't it been on ComCon? And I said, well, Sally makes the agenda and she must not have had the paperwork, but. No, I don't. It was the town's fault, not ComCon's. Yeah, I don't have the paperwork for the for the harvesting. So I, I talked to Michael I, I can, yesterday. He said uh, the plan is to put it on the first meeting in June. Okay, I, but yeah. I need to get Patrick. Tell him I need to get that paperwork by Thursday noon, or oh, at least week? at least yeah. an in, intention so that I can advertise it for the next meeting. Okay. Got it. Monday's a holiday. Oh, that's right. So everything has to be in by, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, yeah, I think if, I think it's okay if it's in by Thursday because the meeting is until. I think it's okay. That paperwork if has I, uh, been delivered to the town hall. <clears throat> it has. Yep, and I also emailed you the PDF copies of uh, the. Uh, uh, for the harvesting? Yep. Okay, okay so can you use that copy? Yes, I can. Okay. All right, I can advertise that then. Thanks, Jackson. No problem. <clears throat> All right, Shannon is here for uh, two Mohawk Lake Road. They have an emergency certification that they want for a failed septic. Yes, hi. Um, last Tuesday, I submitted a request for an emergency certification for two Mohawk Lake Road. There, we did a, um, got a negative determination in 2004 for this same project, um, but now they're using the house more and the system is in failure and they would like to connect to the sewer in, um, at Willow Street. Um, so they're going to run the sewer line from the house and the garage. Um, the plans show it going down the driveway and then down uh, Mohawk Lake Road. We would actually like to put it in the lawn area just next to the driveway. That'll avoid water lines and electric lines. Um, so we are asking for an emergency. The system, like I said, is in failure. There's um, sewage running down the driveway. No. And they're using yeah. it. Um, they have been pumping it three times a day a week and using minimal water. Um, so once again, this was 2004. Is there some reason why they didn't present, you know, they didn't do the work that they were they requested to do? I think they weren't using the house as much at that time. <laughs> And now they are, and they've run into issues. And they didn't figure this out in 2004? No, no, no. Come on. Or, or five, or six, or seven. Let's keep going, guys. Yeah. Let's just do it. Well, it's another, it's another thing that the work wasn't done that was supposed to have been done that was permitted, and then it just fell off the charts. And now they have an emergency. Mm -hmm. Shannon, is this staked out? 
This is um, Kirschenbaum. What? I don't remember that name at all. Was it under another? No. Property owner? Huh. No, it's um, Jerry Kirschenbaum and... I just don't, or that's, that name just doesn't ring any bells to me at all. What was Did the you, nature of the work that wasn't done? It was the same thing, connecting to the sewer in Willow Street. 17 years ago. Because the septic system was known to be in failure 17 years ago? No. Um, you know, I don't really remember, but um. I think they were interested in connecting and then I think we're not using the house as much, didn't have any problems. Um, and now they're using the house more. This is their permanent residence now. Up to the country club for, for lunch. Would have been a lot cheaper 17 years ago. He's new. No, no. It's not sure. Is it staked out, Shannon? No, it is not. I mean, the, the, where the line's going to go, or I mean, I'm sure you know everything runs downhill, so we can just sort of follow it. But where is the sewer and all that good stuff? Um, I submitted plans to you that show where the line is going down the driveway and down Mohawk Lake Road, but the contractor would like to put it in the grass area to avoid other utilities. Um, so it is within the buffer zone to avoid vegetated wetland, as well as uh, Mohawk Lake Road has wetlands on both sides. So we do have erosion controls proposed. So how close is it to the, if the plan has changed, how close is it now to the wetland? It would be 50 feet to the bordering vegetated wetland on the Kirchenbaum property. And then in the roadway, it would be, um, you know, the same as what was proposed, which is just several feet. Oh, which actually that now is an exempt activity running a utility down an existing roadway or driveway. Um, if the work is closed up by the end of the day, erosion controls are used, which it will be. Well, it's, I mean, it says right on the form that we're supposed to do a site visit, so it needs to get staked. And we also need a, an updated plan as to exactly where it's going to go. Okay. So can we do that by Friday? Sure. Okay. Um, we want to do the site visit after NOMCAG? Yes. So it'll be close to noon. That's pretty close. Okay. Okay. What was the address there? Two. Two Mohawk Lake Road. Thanks. And it, just out of curiosity, if you have a quorum at a posted meeting, seeing as how this is like sort of raw sewage, is this anything that could be voted on at the meeting at the? I yes, it's because it's an emergency, and I have yeah. the paperwork, and we could sign it at the meeting. Okay, so maybe we could, Shanna, or is that okay with you if if we could? Get it approved on Friday. That is fine. But um, just out of curiosity, have you talked to um, you know, uh, uh, a water and sewer about the hookup? Are they all set? The form has been submitted. The property owner met with Tony Campetti, okay, good. and he said no problem. And we have a brief email from Jim Willis at Tritown Board of Health. Okay. Saying that this is an emergency. Good. Is, is this going to be pumped to the septic line, the whole pumping chamber and all that stuff? I'm or sorry. Is it, is it, does this entail a pumping chamber and the whole? Nine no, hours? it's all gravity to the existing manhole. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll see that Friday, 12 o'clock Friday to Mackinac Lake Road. Mohawk. Mohawk, Lake Road. Mohawk excuse me. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you, Shannon. I'll okay. make sure we have four people show up, though. What? We need to have four members show up, so it's a quorum. To sign, yes. To sign, right. <laughs> um, Ron, I uh, just heard from Steve Mack about uh, if he can make it Friday at 10.30, and he's he's not available until 11.30. Um, oh, jeez. Come on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> tell him to send his minion. <laughs> Yeah, nom keg first. Yes, we'll do uh 1030 nom keg, eleven forty-five. Mac and actual yours? Yes. I gotta make um, sure. excuse me. Tom and Bill are gone from the meeting. Oh I would suggest that somebody probably would like to let them know that the time for the site visit has changed. Right. So if we do 11.45 at 20 Mackinac Shores, we're not going to make noon for two Mohawk Lake. No. And now so show 12 Shannon, Shannon's still there. Yep. Shannon, 12.30. Sure. What's going on with Nomkeg, guys? Um, I'm going to go look at the new parking area. They want to- No, no, I know. Ahead. What time are we doing the site visit? Nomkeg is uh, 10.30. 10.30. All right. Probably okay. best part to go would be in the cemetery for that one. Yeah, I think so. And then oh. Mohawk Lake Road at what time? 12.30. All right. Moving yeah, on. I, I, that's pushing it for me. Pushing I have out. to be. I have to be in Albany at one thirty. That's going to be a stretch. Yeah, just go fast. <laughs> um, Actually, I have to be there before that because I have to set up. So the twelve o'clock is going to be hard. We can do that one first and start earlier, and end at the eleven forty-five. Shannon, can you do earlier? Shannon's still here. Shannon? Uh, uh, we lost her. No, we lost her. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Let me email her. If telephones work too, you know. I like everything in writing. I I want to be able to refer back to it, and I want to be able to say, "See, we said this." So, as of June fifteenth, we cannot conduct business over Zoom. Yeah, in person you know. again. Thank yep. you. Just so you know. Thank God. The governor has uh, announced that, so we may keep Zoom going for observers, but you won't be able to comment. You won't be able to like you know remotely attend as a board as a as a you know as a committee member good so sally let me yes. let me let me now i'm keg at 10 30. 20 oh. mechanic shores at 11 45. Uh, that's 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 an hour and 15 minutes we need that much time in mackinac or nom keg? I don't think so. Probably not, but I didn't they say that Steve can't be there till then? He can be there at no. 11. Maybe. He can be 11? 11.30. 11.30. Okay, so let's make uh, Mackinac Shores 11.30. And I'm going to, I'm asking Shannon if she can do 9.30 for um, two yeah. Mohawk Lake Road. Does that work for people? Yep. Yes. Okay. I might miss that one. Yeah, more cross offs and scribbles. If I make this on time, I'll be doing good. All right, we'll okay. we'll we'll confirm all this at the end of the meeting. Just to make sure. Um. All right, so Han is still in the wind. We got an email from Mark Stinson 
talking about the Triwalk property. He has some concerns, but we haven't gotten the new submission. The railroad, did you guys hear anything from them? I have not. Okay. John, did you talk to anybody? I did not. I, you know. Jamie, I you didn't either? Me. Okay. All right. So the next is Mackinac Terrace. Is there whoa, whoa. somebody we, here for we, that? Can we back up a sec? What? Yeah. Who's Tonic Railroad? Are we just going to let that go? Um, I thought we were going to contact them. You were going to contact them because don't you have, have the guy's no, phone number? I have no way of contacting them. Oh, I he, uh, he sent us the number uh, about two weeks ago. I didn't see it, get it, or whatever. Okay, well, let's get back in touch with them and see what's going on. All right. You still want to go on the tracks, right? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I think somebody else ought to see it too, whether it's Jamie or some other person who's younger than I am. Yeah. Mm. All right. Continued. <clears throat> Um, Ron, I don't know there's been but a couple other informal items. I don't. I can wait till the end if that's preferred. But all right, Mackinac Terrace, the stairs. Yeah, we were waiting for some information on the um, drainage, drainage, and with the um, possibly some uh, information on the. Uh, the materials that they were going to use for the um, for the stairs. So we're still waiting for that. So it's continued. Yes. Uh, Mice Glen Road. Yep. Uh, myself and uh, Jeffrey Lynch uh, are here uh, for the enforcement order. If you have any questions. Um, okay, I'm just, excuse me, I'm sorry. I just want to finish this little bit of business. So I'm sending the information from the guy at the railroad to you, John, and to the commission. Okay. So if you you and Jamie want to send up, set up a, a time to meet him, you will have the information and I'm sending it to your personal email. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Sally. Sorry, Jackson. Not a problem. Um, so yeah, we're just uh, uh, awaiting the official issuance of the uh, enforcement order. Right, it's one of the uh, garage pieces. That has to be signed. We'll get that. We'll get that signed this week, Jackson. Okay. Yeah, we just wanted to uh, try to find out the the start uh, required start date um, as soon as possible, um, but. If yeah, if you could get it to us that week or uh, signed this week, that would be great. <clears throat> yeah. So if people, it's in the garage, so if people can sign it. Um, I was away all week, so I didn't get a chance to badger people. Um, hmm. All right. We'll get four signatures on that in a day or two or three. Um, is it would it be uh, possible to for us to know the required start work date now? Um, I don't know if you have that info in front of you. Um, if not, I don't because it's in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to have been started by the twenty first of June. Okay, so yeah. it's that time frame. Okay, we uh, get it all signed. Maybe we can move that up. Well, start by, you yeah. know, they can start any time yeah. before that. They would like to start uh, as soon as possible. Um, so as soon as okay. we that, that document, well, they're hoping to get started. Um, I don't know if, if Jeffrey Lynch here has any um, comments on the start date or if uh, he wants to comment on anything. I, I, thank you, Jackson. Um, I just want to make sure that we have have flexibility as, as some of the contractors, I think as everybody is aware, um, it's it's really busy season and getting somebody in there and, and putting it out to the appropriate bid. Um, I, 
I, I don't know if the, the fine that was talked about attaches to that start date or not. Um, but if it, if it is, I'd prefer to have that, see if we can't have any penalty be deferred for a month, just in case contractors are backed up. If we get bad weather between now and the 21st. They've had a lot of years to do this work. Just saying. You didn't. That I, I that that's absolutely acknowledged, and but we're we're dealing with our, our current reality that you know we have. I'm working on with the current attorney of the current owner, and I have money and escrow to pay for everybody. So the work's going to get done. We just want to make sure that we don't back ourselves into another wall um, because of the inability of contractors to meet meet the scheduled deadlines here. That's all. Sure, if you can get them to start in the next week or so, go for it. Is there, Jackson, do we have enough information to have the contractor start with erosion controls, conditions, et cetera? I thought that was part of the, part of our sort of hesitation to get anybody out there and mm -hmm. put shovel to the ground yet. The enforcement order is substantially the same as what you sent jackson there were a couple little bits but nothing substantial um well, well if that's if that's the case then yeah i think we have enough to uh get things started definitely um since we have an approved site plan and um you know a, a list of conditions that is is going to reflect the enforcement order um i think they have uh enough to get started with at least but yeah we would still like to get that enforcement order uh the official document as soon as possible just to make sure everything is is done exactly according to that all right when we get it signed we'll give you a call yes please thank you <clears throat> uh prospect hill bethany woods we're is Bethany. I think you have an old, I think you have an old agenda. Uh, probably not the latest one. Um, Cause that wasn't on this one. That was to be signed. So that's one of the ones that's in the garage waiting to be signed. All right, yep. So I'm, under Tim, the, I'm under the back page, Never mind. sorry. Tim Minkler is our, is our next guy up. So we have a little bit of an issue in that we got, um, we got comments from Mark Stinson Mark is um, all hot and bothered to get a certificate of compliance on the original project. Tim does not remember having done that. Um, I looked on the, um, the Berkshire Middle District um, Registry of Deeds site today. I found the Order of conditions from 1977, which is um, less than informative. Um, the only thing that it requires is a 48 inch culvert under the driveway and a rock um, head walls. But it doesn't, without the plans, I can't really tell. Um, you know, we usually, we usually have either an engineer of record, the engineer of record is always preferred, um, but from 1977, it's possible that the engineer of record is no longer with us for whatever reason. Um, but Mark is, Mark is on this and he wants that certificate of compliance. So, um, Tim, did you find any plans associated with the original house? You're muted. Tim, we can't hear you. You're muted. You're muted. I hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can. All right. Okay. Uh, what he sent me was a file number 296 0022. Right. The order of condition does appear to have been issued. Right. So the order of conditions was issued, but the certificate of compliance, which is required at the end of the project, I have no way of finding that. So how do um, I find it, it? It is not on the um, it's not on the registry of deeds um, site, at least not that I could find. So I'm guessing that it was not applied for, in which case you will need to apply for it. Okay. And, it's and nothing. It's just a one. It's basically just a one-page thing that you have to 
you have to fill out do you who was your contractor at the time uh, bill clegg he's dead okay so he's yeah. probably not going to be that useful probably not um, Her heritage homes is who i went through and they're out of business okay well that's the that's you know as i said to you on the yeah. email today that's the issue with something having gone so long without being resolved um so so i just have a question what am i applying for the driveway uh or what what are you we talking are about? applying for the project you're applying for a certificate of compliance that says that you completed the work under the notice of intent that was issued the the 296 dash 0022 um, that you are um, applying to for a certificate of compliance on the completion of that project, which took place in 1977. Okay. I can tell you that our records from that time in the files are sparse. We have whatever we have is there, but that's really early. And yeah. there, the notice of notices of intent that were issued in those days were minimal. Okay, so I just fill out this form, send it to you, Sally, and CC Ron. Is that what yeah, I, okay. um, I have it. I have it on the agenda for today. The request for the certificate of compliance. Um, it does not have to be advertised or anything like that. Um, it's one of those sort of. Okay, I'll it's, fill it it's out not tomorrow. a. I'll it's not a big tomorrow. deal. But tomorrow. somehow we're going to have to determine. Um, did you, you, were you able to find the plans that accompanied that building? No, no. Okay. I, I, well, I, yeah, I, I've got the architectural plans from Heritage Homes, but. Okay, uh, that would probably help. Okay. Do you need those as well? I can yeah. send them to you. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only thing that's referenced in the notice of intent is the, is the um, culvert under the driveway and the rock uh, um, wing okay. walls. walls. Yeah, the walls, yeah. Okay. And we've seen those. I mean, we right. went out and did a side visit. Sure. So we know that those were done and that they were, they're successful and they're, you know, working. Um, so I don't know what more we need to actually see. Um, but usually we have, we have a, um, some sort of document from the, from an engineer and if it wasn't the engineer of record it's an engineer so i don't know who you have working on the new house well but, i don't don't have an engineer i mean i've got pam sandler and, okay well uh, pam could probably write us write a thing um but if you can't find the plans then we don't have anything to compare well, it to. I, i've got the architectural plans i can get okay those. well she can look at that all right so and like i said the work sally you just We've said that you confirmed that the work was done. Why can't you just issue the certificate of compliance based on your prior site visit? I mean, it's 50 years old. Yeah, I understand. There's, um, there's very few records from back then. I, yeah. I, I know. I mean, if you want, you tell nobody, me. Nobody who signed the, signed the order of conditions is still with us. Yeah, I mean, Warren Haywood was a building inspector at that time. Yeah. And everybody else is gone. He's gone too. But you tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. Okay, so why don't you just, I mean, I, I don't see that it's that complicated. So if, if you can just fill out the request for the certificate of compliance and get that to me by, you know, Thursday, maybe we can sign it on Friday. Okay. Um, and then we can go forward with the notice of intent. Um, because that has to get cleared out before we can go forward with the notice of intent. And, and I, I don't know if you had a chance to read the comments from Mark Stinson. I did. Yeah, what, so what does, those, what does those the... need to be addressed one way or the other, either saying that it doesn't apply or... Um, or what, tell, um, me what, tell me what BVW means. Bordering vegetated wetland. Oh, all right. Because he, he's got that all over the place, and I don't know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I'll, I'll put a little narrative together answering those. Okay, that would be good. Okay. And uh, yes. I'll shoot it all to you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Awesome. CC around. Great. Great. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.
Okay. So, Allie, do we have any other anything else on the agenda? I have um, the performance standards. Actually, can I do it informal too? Oh, wait, Jackson needs something. Yeah, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interject. But, uh, we just, I just wanted to uh, talk about the minor plan revision at 86 Interlake and Road. Oh, that's right. Matt Winter. Um, I have the updated site plan with the, the changes you requested, um, and I could uh, show that to you. And we've also sent the PDFs over to the, the ConCom email. Um, yeah. And they just see so, so we did we did the site visit, and um, so we had some suggestions based on that. Yep. Yep. We uh, made those edits to our site plan and sent that over to you. Um, Jackson, put it up on the screen. We'll all look at it briefly, and then we'll just go on from there. All right. Are you able to see that? Yes. Yes. Um, so mainly the, the changes we made are uh, these pr proposed native plantings, um, low, bush, low bush blueberry, um, some native ground cover, um, and I believe you requested to have the accumulated sediment removed from uh, this this little uh, sediment trap there. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna require a, a constant upkeep by the until until things firm up on there, anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe Mark has Mark Lavasser has communicated that with uh, with Matt uh, Winter, the owner. Um, but anyway, this is the proposed plan. Um, the, the plantings are shown in this kind of uh, grayscale color here to try to uh, differentiate between the existing um, plantings. Uh, and so those are basically the changes we made. Um, and as you know, it's for this proposed French drain system to, to handle some of the storm water coming down there. So is, is low bush blueberry the only shrub being planted? Um, there's going to be high bush blueberry and el elderberry plantings uh, along the shoreline uh, right here. Um, and then they're proposing the, the low bush uh, blueberry uh, over in this area, kind of at the base of this slope. <clears throat> Jackson, my, my live or dead or whatever here. What was that? You're muted, John. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, Jackson, my observation when we were there for the site visit was that the north part of that French drain, in order for it to drain to the south, mm -hmm. there's a high spot. And I'm just really curious as to what you guys are going to do with regard to getting the water up over the top of the high spot and over to that whatever it is, that fake pond. Yep. Um, so the uh, French drain can be uh, built like this in this trench style at uh, a varying depth. So uh, they would likely just have to put it at a slightly higher elevation um, and dig this whole trench to make sure that the pipe has a gentle slope uh, across the entire grade. Um, and then that'll all be obviously underground. Um, so they'll just have to achieve around like a 2% slope um, for water to drain well from that northern end down to uh, this proposed uh, yard drain where it's entering. It was also really pretty wet, <clears throat> even north of your line there where it looks like the French drain starts. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I can't really detail it, but north of there i mean that hill comes down and i was walking over in there and it was like gush 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 mm -hmm. and i'm thinking to myself well you know maybe it just dries up in the summertime and that's fine but you know i'm not sure that it's not going to be a, a constant source i mean you take a lawnmower down there and you know could probably get the lawnmower stuck pretty easily it's a, it's a wet site at the uh, the base of a steep ledge slope. Um, right. So unfortunately, I think it's going to be an issue for them uh, ongoing, but we are hopeful that this French drain uh, installed here will at least uh, mitigate the, the pooling of the water um, and 
um, any erosion that would come along with that um, at the base of the slope and, and near their little beach here. Um, but it'll uh, likely be uh, something they'll have to contend with for the life of the property. <laughs> and can I ask you the dreaded question, what is going to be the sequence of work here? Um, I'm not uh, entirely positive. Um, Adam Weinberg is the uh, the contractor uh, and landscape architect for this year. Um, so we could have him uh, reach out to you with that, but I imagine they would uh, likely just need to get down here with some kind of small excavator um, and they would uh, dig this small trench for a uh, the French drain um, and lay that uh, gravel and the pipe and make sure everything hits the slope it needs to. Um, and then once everything uh, is installed, they'll cover everything back up and, and plantings will be installed. Um, and then hopefully everything will, will grow nicely from there. <clears throat> Jackson, could we come see this when it's finished? Yep, absolutely. So a notification when it's all buttoned up would be nice. Absolutely, we can uh, we can notify you once everything's com complete and plantings are in. <clears throat> um, that area that John was referring to, the whoever's lawn. speaking needs to speak louder. Oh, the area that John was referring to, Jackson, where the lawn was like really really wet. Um, I, I had talked about putting a tree or two in there, a wet site species tree to soak up some of that water. It was very, very wet. And the, the it's nice that you have some plantings along the shoreline, mm -hmm. but I think we need more. I'm going to go out. You've already been out. Um, I can't hear you. Blueberries aren't going to like wet feet. Blueberries aren't going to like really wet feet, but also that lawn, it would, it would serve them well to put a wet site tree in that lawn or two. Or shrubs. Understood. I can I can communicate that to to the owner and uh, to the landscape architect as well. All right. Anything anything else here? Uh, can I just say something as an officious intermeddler? Sure. Um, we live right next to Camp Mackinac. Probably you saw yeah. that they had a terrible fire uh, earlier this week, uh, and. Um, they have a camp season which is going to be ongoing and if they haven't reached out to you and you think that uh, their work is something that you need to be concerned about i would earnestly suggest that you ought to reach out to them i mean they're really distracted by by uh, what's happened okay i'll i'll talk to kevin i i um i actually talked today to our fire chief and uh uh, there was some uh, there was some stored chlorine that melted and got into the ground. It's already been in uh, hazmat cleaned up uh, by the DEP called in the contractor the same day, and they excavated uh, all the leftover chlorine uh, that was stored on the site. Um, they're uh, they're aware of the fact that to uh, rebuild any of those buildings, they'll need to work with Ned and with us. And there's a plan in place to do that. I, I think that uh, that uh, that's uh, that's been communicated with them. The state hazmat group was on site on Friday. The DP was on site and ordered a, a private vendor to do a cleanup, which was completed by Saturday. And uh, and uh, the camp understands that if they want to uh, rebuild any of those buildings the next five weeks, they need to go through the a regular permitting process they would need to go through for everything else. I, I know, Patrick, I know that all that was going on. I was just a little surprised hearing your meeting today, not to hear any discussion of, of the event. And I'm glad to hear what you had to say. Yeah, no, I, I, it wasn't it's not a secret, it's just nobody asked. Uh, but the town's <laughs> been trying to be on top of it, especially with the release of, of the you know hazardous materials that were stored on site. So, uh, but the DP's already given them the full certificate of like, it's already like uh, the cleanup is already completed and approved by DP. Great, glad to hear it. Thank you. Hmm. Any other business? I have a question on one thing, if it'll only take a minute, if you guys have a minute. 
Um, uh, let me just share this. Uh, hold on one second. Um, we have a request in from the someone who's leasing the uh, railroad station. And they're talking about doing, uh, they want their applied for an entertainment license. We're hearing that on Thursday at the select board. And they're trying to work out a deal with Laurel Hill on Laurel Hill's abutting property, which is 74.1. But it's not clear to me if they also want to, because I've heard they want to do a large tent to do events up to 200 people. And if, if they're trying to lease all of Laurel Hill's property, which is what he presented to us last week, is the abutting property and just looking at the map, what sort of, if you're going to put a tent here and have weddings, do we have any concerns that that's along the river line, the river's edge? And the floodplain. And in the floodplain, yeah. That's kind of my question is, before this like board permits this, I would love for somebody to maybe kind of figure out, should we be allowing, because once they have an entertainment license, they can do one special event a year or a hundred. You know, it's entertainment license gives them the right to program as many events as they want. Where are and they parking? In yeah. their What's up? Where are they parking? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I don't know where you where you put a hundred cars with two hundred people anywhere in here. Because you but, don't want them parking along the river, obviously. Yeah. I know, John. You had a business here once, uh, and obviously. Uh, Part of, at least part of this parcel is in both the floodplain and within the you know sort of hundred foot buffer zone or whatever. And I just don't know. I, you know, I'm just looking for advice, frankly. Well, I will tell you this, and that is, is that while I was there, I think it was 1982, the entire shebang got flooded, uh, including the station itself. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I don't know how that's going to apply to this whole thing. But people should keep that in the back of their minds. If we have like four days worth of rain or whatever, you know, I, it's a very kind of special kind of thing in terms of how you approach this. You know, first of all, I don't think that Mr. Nadorf was particularly, um, how do I say this, uh, an ally of. Wait, who? Oh, the, the guy down 75. Okay. You know, Stockbridge and grain, gas, propane, whatever he is. Um, he's not particularly, he smiles a lot, but he, he, when it comes right down to it, he's not going to be really amenable to say, have people parking in his space. So I, I don't know, this deserves a pretty close look. All right. My and then John, what about, you know, the trains whiz by here at 30 or 40 miles an hour you were in a restaurant, right? I assume you had a liquor license. How do you keep sort of like drunk patrons away from like speeding like locomotives? Well, first of all, when I was there, the train <laughs> could walk faster than the train went down the tracks just because the tracks were in such horrible shape. They have now redone the section of track in front of or whatever behind the station. Right. And the trains, I think they are, I think it's 40 miles an hour. Yeah, that's right. And, and there's no schedule. They just come when they come. That's true. And, um, you know, all of this needs to be taken into consideration. You got some little kid out there playing on the railroad tracks, putting pennies down on it. And right. the train. Yeah, exactly. Some flower girl at a wedding. And it's like, oops. Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Well, keep in mind, Patrick, also that this is not only floodplain, but it's riverfront. So it's the 200 foot buffer. Yeah, it's a bailiwick. I wish I'd known Which is, and so this is 191 feet. So 200 feet brings us all the way out to, whoops, sorry about that. You know, like, I mean, this has got to be, if it's just 108, 58 feet, 200 feet has got to be pretty close to that property. Yeah, there's also wetland on the other side of the tracks. So wouldn't you have to send them to the compound, Patrick? I love that idea. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we should look at the plan and look at all of it. Okay, good. And, and including like where they're going to park cars. Yeah. Yeah, I, right. I, I would question how much, unless they're planning on doing something to 
alter the property though. I'm not sure that we have jurisdiction um, if they're thinking about increasing or changing parking area by putting in gravel or anything like that. That would require a permit for sure. Well, how about but putting, putting a up, tent up? Are you but I'm not sure that putting up a tent in and of itself is is something that we would we would have anything to say about. Although I have to say that in the years that I did wedding floral flowers, we did do a tent that got flooded, and it was it was really scary because we had electrics in there and. You know, people were, we had to stand up on platforms so as to not get electrocuted. So, you know, that's so they something put a to tent consider. in the resource area. Your opinion is that we don't have jurisdiction? It's going to be so minor. I mean, it, I, it's the tent not. is. It's 200 people. Not, and parking is not minor either, even if they don't turn it into gravel. I mean, the tent itself is not going to alter enough enough to, to be concerned about. I mean, having the people in there and tables and chairs and all that, I suppose you could say that would, um, but parking would be more of a concern to me than, than the tent itself. Okay. And it's not a permanent structure, so. Yeah. The, the concern would be that the tables and chairs float away down the river. Which but is, they also have a three-year they have a three-year deal with a two-year extension of an option. Five years is pretty permanent. Yeah, but is the tent going to be there all the time, or is it going to be? We seasonal? don't know. They haven't said. Okay. Well, I think there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Yeah, one of them might be um, Nick Nadorf's propane tanks. If that river floods, I remember distinctly watching propane tanks float down the Housatonic River, probably to the dam down in Glenda or Yaconda. That's always pleasant. Hey, I was just a kid. I didn't know anything. All okay. Right. Patrick, send them to us. All right, I'll see what I can do. All right, thank you. We'll, we'll make more, we'll ask more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then performance standards. Yes, I have a question about that. Can we? Is there a way to get them up on the screen? I'll do yes. that. Yes, Patrick's got it. Thank you. I, I want you to know that I had a realtor call me today who I did not call back asking me, well, rather uh, not very specifically saying that they had a client that wanted to know what our performance standards were. <laughs> um, so I think this is something that is going to be, you know, pretty important forthcoming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I just lost it. I have it shared, don't I? Yes. I just sent everybody. Yeah, uh, I've got it. Okay. I see it on the screen. Yeah, I see it on the screen now too. Um, I guess let me start by saying the preamble is really important because Anything that we put in a performance standards, we need to we need to have the scientific backing for. We need to say why, because we can't really protect a buffer zone, but we can protect or we can say why the characteristics of the buffer zone are important for protection of the resource area. So it's laid out, I think, really nicely in that preamble, um, just what a buffer zone does and why it's important and why you shouldn't be parking your cars on it. <laughs> No. Um, I have to say that our um, our wetlands bylaw is pretty darn good, though. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that this would basically be, try to provide guidance and clarification for all of the times where we go up and we say we don't want, you know, we don't want this metal, you know, right up against the water to keep the geese out, whatever it is, the fencing. Uh, we want an X amount of feet of buffer zone as either percentage or a minimum number of feet, you know, I, I was kind of thinking that, that we would, you know, I mean, do everything at least the same, but then really kind of let people know with some clarity what our expectations are, especially around, you know, obviously around, uh, uh, well, I mean, obviously in wetland areas, so. So what, okay. So are there things that are in here 
Are there things that are in our bylaw that are not in here or are there things that are in here that are not in our bylaw? Yeah, the, um, the use of herbicides and all of that, what used to be in the LPOD yeah. and several years ago, um, they took it out mm -hmm. and um, I was, this is kind of a sore point for me because I was chair of the commission at the time and I, they were meeting the, uh, at the same time as our meeting. And so I left our meeting and I went to their meeting as soon as I, it was practical for me to do that. Yep. And I told the then chair of the planning board that, um, that I had some comments about taking that out. And he basically told me to go away. <laughs> and um, I was irate to say the least and saying, you know, we certainly would never treat you that way. If you came to our meeting, we would listen to you, whatever you had to say. Um, and uh, finally, one of the members of the, of the, of the committee said, okay, well, we'll reopen the hearing to hear what you have to say. And so I gave them all the reasons why I thought that they should keep that in the Mm -hmm. in the um, bylaws, but they ignored me and they took it out. So what's what's the experience of this commission with enforcing that? Or, or in, well, that? you know, I have put that in every single order of conditions and as much as I can in the, um, in the, the determinations of applicability um that that i think that is that it has any relevance at all i mean if it's a piece of property that has no wetlands then it doesn't really matter but uh -huh. but if it's particularly on the lake or yeah. on the river or any place like that it, there is something that says um that you can't use these things in perpetuity and so we do already do it and knockwood we've never had a challenge on that and i i don't think that we could legally be challenged on it because you know there's lots of reasons why including the language in this um why that would not be mm -hmm. why it would be defensible okay that's good to hear it it was a real struggle in great barrington um uh, especially for invasive management management but um, i mean i i yeah invasive management is is you know we have we have held our nose and allowed it um, in some circumstances, like in Campusa Bog and on the, um, what is it, Brook down there by the highway garage, um, because the thinking was that the alternative, I mean, I think that there needs to be some language that gives us a little bit of leeway if we think that the destruction of the habitat is so egregious mm -hmm. that we would permit minimal use of herbicides. And of yeah. course we can't prevent it mm -hmm. because the state says it's okay. Right. But I still think that as part of our performance standards, what we're trying to do, we had the long conversation with the person at, um, with Dr. What's his name at the Mackinac Shores about um, you know what happens when you put all this stuff on your lawn is that it goes right into the lake yep. or it goes into the river or it goes you know wherever it goes it has an impact on the resource area and there's no question about that well there's a little wee leeway in the way this is worded because it says um, it's prohibited unless explicitly allowed by the commission in the order of right so in well, certain circumstances we could we could allow i just typed up six examples of points that you know i think that we should look at you know for example uh you know talking about fertilizer and pesticide use i don't know legally what we can and can't do sally but it's something that we could at least uh lay out expectations on uh we had talked when we we're on one of the site visits about a minimum buffer zone distance that could be expressed either in feet or percentage whichever was larger you know, or smaller rather. So if they had 20 feet of distance from the water to the house, we said, okay, we want 25% of that to be the buffer zone. But if they had 100 feet of distance, we want a minimum of 15 feet, for example, some kind of mathematical formula that tries to take into account very small lots versus more reasonable sized lots. Um, uh, what We've always said 200 feet of the lake. 
But but do you do it? Well, no, but 200 feet obviously would put you up onto like three properties away on places like Mackinac Shores. So, you know. Oh, I know, but with the use of herbicides and and fertilizers, we've always oh, said yeah, 200, that within 200 two. feet about, of the lake. No, you're talking, I'm talking about the buffer zone now. Like, yeah, I know. So, so having some formula that we can express that says, look, if you have, for example, 20 feet of, of lawn between your house and the water, we want five feet of that for an underserved buffer zone. And what and defining what that means in terms of example, plantings, what's allowed, what's not allowed, and and uh and activities such as what's not allowed, like mowing and weed whacking and you know, whatever, and and then what the access looks like through the buffer zone to get to things like docks and uh and uh and or you know, just water access. So I just think these are some examples of some really specific um, guidance that we could provide to applicants to try to get them to understand what we want before they start designing, rather than having sort of people all roll their eyes and say, well, we didn't know that that was what you're gonna need. You know, that way no one has an excuse for basically coming to us with a lawn that goes right up to the water. Mm -hmm. I agree. The zoning bylaws are pretty clear on how the pathway to the dock is supposed to be. It's supposed to be at an angle. It's not supposed to be a straight shot. And that's pretty yeah. well laid out in the zoning bylaws. But, but I also think that, it, that anything that we just want to repeat that's right. already in the zoning bylaw, we should right. repeat just to remind people that it's there and also to remind future commissioners that it's there. Because, right. you know, a lot of us haven't necessarily studied every single page of our 250 pages of zoning bylaws. Right. So, no, I agree. I agree that we should we should make a statement somewhere in our, and we have made a statement um, uh, that has has been a, in our in our books for a while about upholding certain tenets of the zoning bylaws, including the doc bylaw for instance mm -hmm. but i think one thing that we need to we need to work out marie i saw you there i don't see you now um one thing we need to really cement i think is and you have it there about the uh docks is you can't have five docks on one piece of property. I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. And then but, and sell it and rent it out or do whatever they do. That that one piece of property down there, we've never we've never solidified what's happening with that. They've got three docks on on a property that's um that's that's not an auxiliary use property. I don't right. even know how that's still allowed, why they haven't been- Because out. they claim to dead that it was uh, installed before the bylaw was written. And so- No, it tried. was not. That's what they said. I'm not saying they were telling the truth. Yeah. That's what they said. We know for absolute 100% sure that at least one of those docks was built two years ago. We know that. Yeah, well, so that was not true. So Patrick, if we look at your list, fertilize the use for properties that are in the buffer zone. What do you want to, you want to say not allowed? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> I want you to figure out a way to say it in a way that's legally defensible, which is why Donna, our town council has offered to help us with this. Okay, good. Good. And but also we need to make it clear that fertilizer, organic fertilizer is fertilizer because people say, oh, you mean you can't right. even use organic fertilizer? They don't seem to get the result is the same. Yep, okay. And what do you mean by composition of buffer zone vegetation? Well, okay, it's, required, so it's required that it be native. Okay. But I, it's, but, al you know, at the last it's already required in the order of conditions that's, that's on the, you know, the DEP order of conditions it's already I understand that it. Sally but but you know you just um you just had made an observation that I thought was very curious a landscaper put in a whole bunch of plants those blueberry plants that are not going to do well on that site right so what happens after we're done and we give them the certificate of compliance and they all die what happens they get ripped out and they get replaced with, with grass so right I think you could basically do you could you could talk about categories 
of plantings that are native that match the conditions on site and how there's an expectation that the landscaper is not going to specify something that has a low chance, low probability of taking to the site. Because that's, I think, how people backdoor into sort of doing whatever they want with it and not having plantings. So I don't know. So I'm not saying that that applicant was trying to do that, but I do no, think, I think that, that's uh, excellent. I think that's excellent that the, the, the plantings need to be native and appropriate to the conditions where they're going to be planted. And right. they need a survivability rate, five year survivability, 75% over three years or five years, whatever you want, so that if they do die, they have to be replaced by the applicant or replaced with something different, but not grass. I'm not sure right. we can ask for five. I think we can only ask for three. But what we can do is we can evaluate, basically blueberries don't like wet feet as Ron said. I never knew that by the way. You know, the, that if that's the case, why are we planting them in an area that we know is gonna be swampy? <laughs> I can hear one reason because we don't want anything there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I would change the five to three. Okay. I don't think I'm not writing these we, right now. You're going to have to do that with town council. I'm just yeah, brainstorming on some ideas. Yeah. What happened? Well, looks like we've froze up. What? You can't see us? No, we're, so we're still here, I guess. Yeah. All right. So let me just save this. I'm going to send these notes out to everybody right now. With my notes in them and then i think you know sort of starting to flesh this out and add to the points and then you know uh one person can work with me that you guys assign and together we can reach out to donna who said that she'll help us with this as soon as we ask okay good yeah. all right so i'm going to send i this. think if lisa is willing that would be great yeah that's fine. okay yeah. and and the other thing um kate fletcher um was very adamant about something to do with bird strike. Um, I'm not sure how we would form that, but I think she has a... I think we should try to ban windows. What do you think? Huh. Yeah, yeah. But there are ways to make it less attractive. Yeah, no. bird, Let's put that bird on there, killer. bird strike question mark. I'm kidding you, Kate, if you're watching this, I know you watch every every meeting i'm only making fun of you out of fun not because no, i don't agree and, with and, you know i if that's something i'm i certainly care about but is it a wetlands issue i don't know it's hard pressed to be one yeah i don't unless okay. the home is in a wetlands or borders a wetland then, right. we, then we may have some issues might have going. something it might have some basis in habitat right um protection mm -hmm. But and I think one um, other thing that you might consider is you know when we were when we were applying for the dredging, the breakthrough happened when we we offset the potential takings of the snail by proposing that we take out Phragmites from the causeway. That's what NHTSB and DP really reacted to was this idea of if there was going to be a taking, was to offset that. So you know I think that um for example if. If the buffer zone is supposed to be like, you know, 35 feet, but it's not realistic, you know, um, because the plot is so long, um, can we can we recommend offsetting like invasive removal, for example, or, or you know, like we, some kind of, uh, if we're gonna give them something, what do we get back well, kind of thing? We have done that. Um, we have done that in the past and it's not something that we, um have really pushed lately and i think maybe right. we need to think about it some more like okay so you want to do this thing which we don't really love but we need you to you need we need you to make us happy so you need to do this and I, and we talked about that with the three or whatever their names are um yeah. property over there yep. because they uh you know they they were scoff laws as far as I'm concerned. And, um, uh, you know, you're asking for, per if you're asking for permission to do something that we think is a little iffy, I think that you need to give something. Well, or if you, for example, ignored us for 20 years and you want us to give compliance. You know, right. I think that that's completely reasonable 
to make as a condition of a, of a uh, moribund order of conditions that was never followed. I mean, right. but I think that these are all things that, you know, people should be able to say, okay, you know, regulation, you know, 10.2 says, you know, we should propose this sort of thing. Just so these are just our ideas. Let me just say one thing. That is already in the regulations that any work in the buffer zone, the applicant has to show that it's an improvement. So if they're doing something that the commission doesn't like or isn't great, it's, it's their responsibility to also do an improvement, whether it's plantings or invasive right. removal. That's not a stretch at all. That's already in the regulations. I understand yeah. that, but I think part of what we're writing this for is not only guide, is really, as I see it, there's, um, there's three stakeholders here, four really. There's, uh, there's commissioners, there's abutters, there's property owners, and there's professionals. All right. Now, professionals know that, Lisa, but don't want to have to give, spend any of their clients' money unless we ask them to. Sometimes commissioners, especially new ones, don't know that. So having, having some kind of statement in the regulations that says this is what our expectation is could help us. And then, you know, when it comes to things like abutters and owners, then they've got more clarity as to what our expectations are, you mm -hmm. know. So I just think I just think laying it out, even if it's sort of redundant where it's stated somewhere else, is not the worst idea in the world. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It's also a little simpler for them to understand than reading the entire, you know, yeah. 310 CMR. Yeah. Oh, I ran into Lisa in town. Am I muted or not? No, nope. nope. you're good. Oh, you're with us. I, I ran I ran Lisa in town and I Kind of banged on the can that I've been banging on a long time, and that is, I believe that when we come, when we get a an applicant like Twenty Mackinac Shores, um, or some places, just obviously in our purview, that two things: number one, we ask for carved in stone, a sequence of work. And two, we ask if it's within our legal bounds to be reported upon for three different phases. First phase, they come to us, they show us the plan, we go to a site visit, everything's hunky-dory. We say, go ahead, but you know, we'd like to see this when you have performed X, Y, Z. And they say, okay. And they call us up and they say, what are, email us. What's the first phase, John? Just so I can type it in. The first phase is when they initially apply. Okay. They come, plans, the whole thing ends up being a site visit. You know, we go to the site visit. It looks good. We say, go ahead and do it. Second, I would say that somewhere in the course of looking, I mean, we, we get a, a sequence of work here so that we know what, what's happening here. And then we say, okay, during the, the whole process here at this particular point, we would like you to come back to us so we can go to another site visit. Okay, so what is the B of the three phases? The wow wow? Well, you said that the first phase was the application. What is of three phases? What's the second phase? I'm just typing notes. The, the second phase is we go and we see how so they proceeded with their plans. Periodic check-ins. Right, but they should be more formal. So are that formally that are formally defined right. in the order conditions. Right. Or their plans. Okay. In their plans our and or our order of conditions right because a lot okay. of times they do have and even though we don't we don't look at it as carefully as we should frankly um they okay. do have very often in their plans and a, a sequence of work okay and we have been sort of neglectful i think in in really looking at the plans carefully to find out if they have a sequence of work and we, you know, they're good. The, they, um, for the most part, they've, they've learned what we want from them and they don't come in 
as often with things that we go, yeah, no. And what's um, the third phase? And so the, we have periodic check-ins. What's the third phase? And the third phase is to go prior and to- And as built? Yes, that's it, as built. What does that mean for us? Lonely the as built is about. that they um, provide us. It's actually the same. It's in, and it it would uh, it would tie in with it. It's actually basically the same thing as requiring or as, as presenting the certificate of compliance request, because they in doing that they provide the letter saying that the project was was completed as substantially according to the plans. Correct. And we are then supposed to go do a site visit to see Correct. that whether we agree. I would like to. Um, because, you know, here we have a, we have a, uh, we have a, um, a pre presentation now from a project that was done in 1977. Now, how the hell are we going to evaluate that? We really can't. And they are required to um, apply for the certificate of compliance upon completion of the project but they don't. Right. So I'm just saying if we have this in online in, in everybody's face that they don't have a whole lot of excuses. Now, you know, I don't mean to, to throw any sympathy towards 20 Mackinac Shores um, in no way, but if I'm not sure, if I'm not mistaken, when Mark comes up and sees that, especially if he's looked at Google Maps and sees that this is a new peninsula sticking out in the Stockbridge Bowl, it is going to cost that homeowner considerable money to undo what they have done. And this whole thing that I'm presenting here avoids that. Right. So I have a question. How long do people have from when we issue an order of conditions to complete the work? They have three years under that order of conditions. And okay. then they can apply for an extension and they can apply for as many extensions as they want, but the, the order of conditions expires as of three years. Um, so why don't we simply ask Michael Canales to, to do a simple free database. We're using any one of the 1.5 million free database sites that are now on the internet to create a database of every OOC we issue along with the expiration date to make sure that the certificate of compliance has been issued or it's been extended by, you know, by, uh, by, I, I mean, why are we tracking these things? Is my question. I think Patrick, you're not Pat, you're not tracking them because you don't have an agent. I think a lot of what this involves is an agent that people can come in and talk to and ask questions and say, this is where we're at in the work. And the agent goes out and looks and says, this is good, this is not good. But if you're gonna pull up hundreds of orders of conditions without an agent, you're gonna be overwhelmed. Okay. We have 517 orders in this town. Yeah. Just saying. And according to Mark, we have more than most towns that are you know, several times the size of ours. That's because we have a lake. I'm just saying. Yeah, that, we have a know, lake, I mean, we have rivers, we have all that stuff. So, I mean, you our, know, our the tiny initial... database is a million records. I mean, 517 records, especially if we're just storing four or five pieces of information, the applicant name, when it was issued, when it expires. I mean, this is a trivially easy database to develop. I'm just saying, you know. Well, I um, have a I have a spreadsheet on jurisdictionals, but I do not have a spreadsheet on order of condition. Actually, I started one, but I didn't keep up with it. Yeah, I'm just saying that we might want to, you know, uh, don't do we still have money that's coming in from all of our sort of uh, permit fees and stuff? I think so. It's one I of mean, life's great nice mysteries. Minimum wage, like temp to you know, basically turn this into an, a, a, Google, a Google database slash spreadsheet that, you know, could be, could be accessed by the chairman and the secretary or, or and an agent. I mean, you know, uh, Michael's looking at sharing an agent with some other towns. I guess Berkshire Regional Planning was going to propose something like that. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but, you know, I, I think in the next year we'll, we'll definitely address that. But in the meantime, you know, 
as we issue these, let's start tracking them, even if we are only tracking them going forward and not going back, at least initially. I believe we have $21,000 in that fund. Excellent. I'll try to hire a cousin. I'm the kidding. Last, Anybody last watching? I'm kidding. Okay. So so let's uh, let's just think about how we um how we maybe start to I think part of the process should be to know, you know, so that you know 40, 43 years from now, someone doesn't say, oh, look at this order of conditions was issued in 2021 and you know it's still outstanding. It'd be nice if if our if whoever follows us isn't faced with that same predicament. <laughs> Mark was going was going back through some of the records and 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 calling up getting the order, getting certificates of compliance for some of the projects, but I don't know how far along that's gotten. Mark Stinson? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're well, good. For all towns or I don't know. He just he. I know he contacted a few people and said we want to see your order of condition or your certificate of compliance. Mm -hmm. And that's why when a project like Tim's comes up, he's really hot on getting that certificate of compliance. He wants that closed. He wants those projects closed out. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll send this to everybody, and then you know, uh, we can expand on it. Right. Good. Thank you. Where is that? Okay, let's stop this one and. No, but we can't expand on it. Well, you're gonna have to type. Someone's gonna have to copy what I did and put it into Lisa's uh, Google document. I just, I, I, I downloaded uh, into a Word document. Uh, Lisa, why don't I just send it to you? Okay. You, Sally, and Ron, or something. Uh, it's up to you guys. Okay. Thank you um let's see and don't forget someone's got to talk to ron i'm sorry tom and bill about the change in the times about what? yeah thank you what time okay my edited doc so i would suggest lisa that this is um that this is uh something that goes to uh that you basically just sort of take my ideas and add them into whatever sections you want in the online version Okay. I mean, as a, just do it however you want to do it. I don't care. It's up to you guys. I would All right. I just check and see if I've heard back from Shannon. Excuse me. I would also suggest, Patrick and all, that we put this in a paper form that can be put in that brochure display outside Ned's office so the people who are wondering mm -hmm. what they, if they're going to buy a piece of property, what it is they're up against so that they can yeah. see it. They can take it well, home and they can read it, feel it, touch it. They can, you know, look at it, say, oh, I can go to this website and I can see what the heck I'm, I'm up against. I would, with things the way they are, it's going to be more and more. You know. Yeah, I just don't know how often we up update something that's printed, but okay. I, you know, I have access to very, very, very steeply discounted printing. Yeah, but we, got, we just need processes that work, you know, sort of. I mean, for example, I mean, maybe the database allows a PDF version to be generated from it so that, you know, anybody who wants an updated list can just get it. I don't know, you, you guys decide, whatever. The, it should go on the website. Once it's finalized, it should be on our website, right. along with the bylaw. They should both be on the right. website so people can just find them. The bylaw is on the website. I didn't see mm -hmm. it. I'll look again. Yeah. I didn't see it. Okay. It's there. All right, well, this one, if this is done, this should too. So, Christina, you know, from your experience on the planning board, if you're still there, do you have any comments or suggestions or ideas of things that we should try to include? Patrick, Jesus. Hmm. Does oh, not seem to be um, there. Um, I ha I think that it would be great if you brought this to the planning board after their reorganizational meeting next Tuesday night and ask them for their ideas. And perhaps it could be one document with both regulations that people should know. But I think particularly with the LPOD, that becomes just 
where we get played one against the other. And yeah. in my opinion, and you know, not speaking for anyone, but my opinion is that there should be a process as to who goes first with LPOD and who does the second right. um, review, because we want one thing, or the planning board wants one thing, and you have other issues that you want to address and maybe even have combined reviews on some of those larger projects would make sense, like the one on Mac and Act where yeah. we both are suffering. Um, yeah, the thing with these is, well, we have to be careful, Christine, is that the town wetlands bylaw is what empowers this right. com I, conservation commission to develop performance standards. We're not writing new bylaws here. We are simply articulating standards that the current bylaw allows us to articulate. So I don't think we can do, I think we can ask for people's opinion on whether or not this does what we want to do as a town, but I don't think we can try to create a set of regulations that goes beyond the scope of the town wetlands protection bylaw, because that is what is the empowering sort of law that is making this possible. Yeah, that makes I, sense. I think this has to be specific to wetlands. It would be yeah. really confusing to have planning board regulations in there with us. Oh, we also have scenic mountains. Let's not forget that. Right, yeah, well, that's, that's right. That's separate. But we are the regulator on that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's been some suggestion that the LPOD ought to go under um, conservation. And on that on that happy note, at 8:39, I may suggest that we uh, I've sent performance centers off to you all. Um, I think it's time for dinner. What do you think? Good. What? Nice for me. Before I make a motion to adjourn, John, are you still here? John, you're muted, I John. You're muted again, John. I'm here. I'm just listening to everybody. Our next meeting is the eighth. Eight it will be. It will be one more Zoom meeting. No. Joe has the coolest effect, by the way. <laughs> I I may or may not be able to attend it, depending on how my computer reception is at the other end of the state. Oh, so it'll be it'll be fine. Right. I'm sure. I can I can attend, you know, with using my phone as a hotspot from the Adirondacks. So somehow I think the other end of the state ought to be accessible. We'll see how it works. I will give it my best shot. <laughs> it's not a good shot. Don't forget, tomorrow night is the Baby Town meeting, and June twelfth, show up and vote at mm -hmm. the town meeting. Baby Town meeting. What do we do about it's tomorrow? Where's that at, Patrick? It is right here Zoom. in your living room. Oh, it is being Zoom. Via Zoom, one of our last meetings. However, the town meeting is in the parking lot, you know, behind uh, in the basketball court behind yeah, town hall. Did that last year. Yep. So wear your best year sucker suit and uh, bring <laughs> right. a bring a mint julep, and we'll see you on June twelfth. And your rain gear. Right, exactly. <laughs> so June twelfth is town meeting. It is. It is. And baby town meeting is tomorrow night. It is tomorrow night. 6.30. Okay. I hear a motion to adjourn. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. And Do we second. have a second? I second. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I got quarter I'm to nine. 8.41.